next unit of study will be learning to use the bow. Let's begin by learning the different parts of the bow. The wooden part is called the stick, or the shaft. You'll notice that it's curved so that the middle part is closer to the hair. This curve is called the camber. If you're into archery, you'll notice some similarities. Our modern bows are shaped like recurve bows, whereas the traditional Baroque bows from 400 years ago have a camber more like long bows. The next part is the hair. Try not to touch the hair a lot, as dirt and oil from your skin can damage it over time. Occasionally touching it won't hurt it much, so if you want to touch it just this once to see what it feels like, go ahead. The hair on a bow is real hair. It comes from horsetails. Now, don't worry, horsetails are not like dog tails. If you were to cut off a dog's tail, that would be cruel and painful. But horses' tails don't have any flesh in them, they're just hair. In fact, this is why we call that one hairstyle a ponytail, because it looks like a pony's tail. Horse hair is used for a lot of other things besides bows. Uh, for example, it's also used for some paintbrushes. The hair can come in different colors. Most bows use white horse hair from white horses, though they're actually more of a tan color. The hair can also be black, or even what they call salt and pepper, which is a mixture of gray with either black or white. Now, just like people's hair, different kinds of horse hair have different textures. Salt and pepper is coarser hair than white, and black is the coarsest of all. The coarser the hair is, the easier it will stick to the string. This can be helpful if you need a short, harsh, or large sound, but will make it harder to play delicately or smoothly. I love black hair on a baseball, as it makes it effortless to grip the strings. I've seen the cello metal band Apocalyptica use black hair on some of their songs in order to get a crisp sound on their C-string. And violinists and violists and fiddle bands sometimes use black hair as well. But by far the most common bows use white hair, and I've only ever seen one student bow with black hair. The next parts are the tip and the frog. The frog is this black part underneath the stick. I'm not entirely sure why it's called a frog, though it may come from the French word froc, which is the tool luthiers use to carve the frog. This is the grip, and it can be made either from leather or from metal winding or a combination. Luthiers will customize the material and size of every bow grip until the bow is weighted just how they want it to be. The screw is used to tighten or loosen your bow hair. And last is the ferrule, also called the ferrule. It is this metal part in between the frog and the hair. It gets its name from the Latin word for iron, ferrum. If this is the frog, then I like to think of the ferrule as the frog's fake tooth. It uses... It helps protect the hair from falling out and make sure that the hair is in a flat line so that all the hair contacts the string at the same time. Alright, so those are the parts of the bow. But even though all these parts are the same between bows, did you know that the actual shapes of the bows change between different instruments? And even different sizes of instrument? In the next video, you'll learn how to tell if you have the right bow for your instrument.